There are so many different no-code app builders out there now. There's Glide, Softer, Flutterflow, Adalo, and so many different options out there. If I'm being honest, it's hard to keep track of all of them because most of them are shipping new features all the freaking time. It's quite wonderful. What is the best no-code app builder right now though? That's been a hard question and one that I've struggled with in the past few months. Like most tools though, it depends on your use case. In this video, I'm going to cover three no-code app builders that I found the most helpful. Glide, Adalo, and Flutterflow. These three no-code app builders are mobile focused for the most part and I'm going to keep it limited to that. If you're looking for more of a desktop web app, Softer and Bubble are worth checking out. I'm not covering those two because they are built more for desktop web apps. So without further ado, let's get started by jumping into Glide. Okay, so here we are in Glide and I've already signed in. I'm in my own dashboard here and it's pretty simple when you log in to Glide, which I like. So what I want to start though is let, let's say we want to create a new project. So this would be like a new app. So I'm going to pick Glide app because we're just focusing on these mobile apps here in this video. So I'm gonna do this, create Matthew's app. Now here is the like the one part that I really, really like about Glide is that it connects to tools that you might be already using, especially if you've already been working with building an MVP or minimum viable product with Google Sheets, Airtable, or Excel. Now for me, I have a tendency to build stuff in Airtable first and then kind of go from there. Um, so, but the nice thing though, is if you're, if you're building a really clean Airtable base, a really clean Google Sheets and like data is really clean, Putting all that and connecting that to Glide is really easy. It makes your life a lot easier in terms of building it, the app in Glide. Because um, if you want to think of Glide as the front end, and then you can think of Airtable, Google Sheets, Excel as your back end. So in this example, though, I'm not going to connect it to anything. I'm just going to use the Glide tables, which is like what you can build out originally. And you can even import things into Glide really nicely, too. So if you like, if you want to start with Glide tables and then import things, you can do that, too. So I'm going to create a project here. It's going to load up and it's going to kind of give me just like this like standardized app kind of looking thing but you can see though it's pretty intuitive i i that's the part that i really like about glide is that's pretty natural and it comes as if you're used to especially like web builders like squarespace wix you know the simple web builders like building in glide is really similar um it has a little more complexity to it but it just it takes a little bit of getting used to but it, naturally though comparatively to the other tools we're going to talk about i think it has a little more intuitiveness so there's like all these different styles. There's these tiles, cards, checklists, um, like even a swipe function, these details, um, like a map function, a calendar function, um, a list. So there's all these different things. And if let's say you want to change like these bottom bars, all you have to do is, you know, let's say I want to do a chat. Well, then there's here's chat. Then you can even click here and like, you know, add chats and things like that, which is really cool. So it's really nice. It's really intuitive. There's different, all these different ways, right? You can organize things and it's like you can, especially if the data is really clean really quickly, you can build things really fast, which is awesome. Okay, so now we've covered the intuitiveness though, but the one thing I, before we jump out of this app is that what I want to show you, right, is this, so you can see this like data editor. This is the back end of the app. So this is like, this is just like a Google sheet. It's a spreadsheet essentially, right? And here's all the different tables and things like that. And you can edit and then what happens, right, is that Clyde then takes all that and just makes it pretty here in this app looking function. And then you can publish it and you can have people check it out with this like link. Um, so it's a really quick way to spin up apps, especially if it's a really simple app um, and have people play around with it. it. It doesn't, one of the cons though of Glide is that you can't send stuff to the app store, which is a little bit of a bummer. I think there's a legitimacy piece when you can push stuff to the app store. Yes, there's hurdles to getting to the app store with, with you know with pricing and the amount of time it can take depending on which stores you're going towards. But definitely, like, I think it's a legitimacy part when you're actually building an app and launching it for real. So this works for like just kind of getting an MVP and testing things out. But in terms of like scalability and things like that, I, that that that's limiting. Um, now you can publish. There's different ways to publish a Glide app to the app stores. But the one thing that I've read and I've seen is that Glide actually takes their support away from you um, if you do that because it's not supported. Um, Glide doesn't support that going to the App Store. So there's pros and cons to that. Um, but I think if you lose support, like that's a really big deal. And I think that's like if you're trying to scale up with Glide, I think that's a, something to be definitely to be considering as you're moving forward. But again, if you're just kind of testing things out, want to see if you have something for real. This works. Now that we've gotten this app, I want to actually jump back into the dashboard to show a couple other things. Um, and one is this learn piece. And actually there's a lot of different tutorials and things like that. This campus for learning glide is actually pretty stinking good. 
So you can see like there's different examples you can build, um, how to manage data in Glide, and then like these like really simple, like, you know, kind of intro pieces to Glide. So if you're looking to learn Glide and maybe, you know, be able to be, build a little more robustness in your apps, like definitely, I, this is definitely the place to start um, in terms of like how to learn Glide. So that's the learning piece of Glide. The last thing that I want to show you in Glide is actually the, all the different templates that they have. So if I go back to glideapps.com, their webpage, I kind of wish they had templates better. Like this is your own templates. I wish they had templates that's more accessible here in this dashboard, but that's minor. But the nice thing, right, is if you go to templates here, you can see there is so many different templates that you can use. Like a company, if you want to build your own company CRM, an inventory tracker, um, you know, a, a simple store, task trackers, you can do all these different things right here in the Glide templates gallery. Um, so you don't have to be an expert in Glide to like just pick these up. It's really nice if you, especially if you just want to make things pretty really quickly, maybe you have a really nice Airtable base, but people don't love like the, because Airtable can be a little bit complex, especially if you have some bigger bases. Um, these Glide apps can make it a little bit simpler to use, um, which is really, really nice. Okay, so that's Glide. Let's move into the second mobile app builder, and that is Adalo. So here we are in the second app builder I want to talk about, and that is Adalo. Now, Adalo can do desktop and native mobile apps as well, but again, we're going to focus on these mobile apps portion. So in this, I'm going to create native mobile app here, do that, and then this is where I kind of like it over Glide is that the template's a little easier to get to. Um, but you don't have to go with these templates, but let's say for just for showing this things off, I'm going to use this appointments one. So let next, and you can do, let's say like the appointment tutorial, um, select like which kind of users are, so customers of my startup, and then I'm just going to go up the standard colors. Okay. So it's creating the app, and this is where Adalo is a little more complex than Glide, right? So there's all these different screens. So if you have more of a design background, and especially if you use a tool like maybe Adobe XD, things like that, Adalo might come more naturally to you rather than like Glide. Um, Glide has a more, again, the the Squarespace Wix feel to it, where, whereas Adalo has more of that designer feel to it, and you can design everything in the nitty gritty pieces of it. So you can see here's all the different options you can use, the net, like all these buttons, lists, um, you know, every little b components um, that are here and that, and then you can add, add screen, but then you have to connect everything with, you, know, you can see all the different actions that are flowing. Like if you sign up, it's gonna send you to this. It's gonna, you're, you're mapping all these different things together. So again, it, it's, it has much for like all these different screens are different pages that you're building out in your app. So it has a little more robustness I compare it to Glide, which I like. Um, I think it's a little more scalable than like a Glide. And that's, I think that's where Glide, right? Glide can be more of, I think, an internal tool if you have a, an or a bigger organization and you want to just use it as an internal tool. I think that's where Glide really shines. Where I think Adalo can shine is actually more like in this a little more robustness, um, especially if you're not technical and like, you know, maybe you have more, especially if you have a design background, Adalo can really get things going really quickly too. So especially since these templates are really nice. So, and then the, if I hit preview, right, you can actually preview the entire app. You can see what it looks like. And um, they have all these different kinds of phones too, which is kind of nice now. So you can see what it looks like on those different phones. Um, it's not great, but it works. Um, and then you can also share it out too, right? So if it's a previewer, it has like what the app looks like and you can share it and there's a little QR code, which is really cool too. So I like that quite a bit. Um, the database too, right? So this has like, you know, the, it's similar to like where I think Glide is, right? So you can, you can connect to Airtable, Google or different maybe sources that you have, which is awesome. You do have to be a, doing it in the paid, in the pro versions of Adala, but that's gonna be, if you're gonna do this, do this for real, right? You're gonna have to pay for description anyways. Um, but you can also build the data right here in Adalo, which is cool too. So there's that. Um, you can hit the publish. You can see that all the different versions that you might have published, which I think is really cool. You can also see like right how you're developing. You can really build a product roadmap with Adalo, which I like. I think that's a good thing. You can see the analytics right here, if you're especially if you've launched already. So there's a little more robustness to Adalo, which I like, which is really awesome. One thing that I want to add to you, right, is these components, right? So there's actually some like really cool marketplace components that you can actually buy and they're pretty affordable too, which I, I think is good. So there's actually like there's free ones here. So like Google Maps, um, all these like different Apple sign in, like there's all these different things you can build in, which isn't really nice. And then here's all like these premium things, which for some, like some of these are kind of silly, like why would you pay for it? But like a loading spinner, like do you really need a loading spinner? But 
maybe it's a big part of your design and branding. I don't know. Um, but you know, for some of these things, right, it's, it's a really big deal. You want maybe an advanced calendar. Um, you know, there's some, certain things that might make sense for others, which is really nice. And again, you can see it's like 25 bucks. It's 14. Like these are pretty affordable features components that you can buy, which is really cool. Um, I think it's a really nice component and part of Adalo. Okay, and then the other thing about Adalo too, which is really nice, and I think this is where it has the biggest edge on Glide, is that you can actually publish to the app stores right in Adalo. So if you hit publish here, now I don't have the pro version of Adalo here, but you can actually just hit, if you upgrade it, then you have an Android and an iOS and a web app, and you can publish right in Adalo, which is really nice. So now that we've covered publishing, we've covered what these, like the main screens look like here in Adalo. Well, I wanted a couple of things that I want to just mention lastly before moving on to the last tool is that Adalo does have their own learning academy as well. So you can see the Adalo app academy right here on their main website. And they have all these different courses and there's all these different things to learn how to build an Adalo. So that's a really nice piece as well. Now for the downsides of Adalo, I think there's a couple just to keep in mind, but I don't think any of them are necessarily deal breakers. One that I've seen through comments and seeing how others have launched apps on Adalo is that sometimes, especially if someone else has gone viral maybe with their app and they have a lot of user growth and things like that, it can crash others because everyone's using the same databases and things like that. Um, or at least it's using the same server power as maybe your app as well. And Adalo really hasn't built that structure just yet. So scaling can be a little questionable. Um, but I think if, especially if you're launching, maybe this is your first app and, or maybe you're in like this intermediate stage from between MVP and like, Hey, we can scale to millions of users. I think if you're in this like a hundred to, you know, a few thousand people using it for the first time, I think Adalo can do it. I think just keep in mind, like, right, there might be some scaling problems with it because Adalo is also a startup themselves and they're figuring out how to scale. So I think it's going to be okay, but I think like, I just be aware of it that it could happen like your app breaks because there's some scaling problems. The other thing too that I've heard and seen in comments and, you know, from different places and reviews is that sometimes the support team of Adalo can be a little bit lackluster. So Again, keep this in mind when you're scaling up and just be able to support. I think be ready to support your own stuff on Adalo um, and don't bet on the customer support team just yet with Adalo. But again, like I mentioned at the very, very beginning of this video, these app builders are changing like so fast. Like the support team might look way different in even a month from this video and it might be outdated. So, but so far, like I really like Adalo. I think it's got a lot of robustness to it, um, but it's also kind of intuitive as well, especially if you, again, you are a designer. Enough of a dollar. Let's move into the last app builder that I want to talk about, and that is Flutterflow. So here we are in Flutterflow, and this is the main dashboard. Once you've logged in, you can see that it looks a lot like the dashboard in Glide. Now to get started in Flutterflow, I'm just going to hit create new. And the one thing though, they have a lot of different templates and things like that, but I think you actually need for any of these templates to have a pro subscription. So I'm just going to create a blank one create a name, let's say just example app, hit create blank. And it shows that you're like, hey, starting a new project, things like that. And it'll actually walk you through a little bit, um, but that's okay. So I'm not gonna do the tutorial, but this is a really nice feature, right, of Flutterflow is it actually has a tutorial built into what you're doing. And their content is a little lackluster. They don't have the same like app academies that Adalo and Glide have but they do have some people in YouTube doing it, but it's not as organized. I think this is coming. There's the documentation in Flutterflow is really nice and like written text, but the like video tutorials aren't all there just yet. So I'm gonna just start building for now. As you can see, this has a lot of like the glide, like this is kind of a combination of like glide and Adalo a little bit, like right, there's these elements, there's the components, like components, elements, same difference, I think at this point. But I will say Flutterflow is definitely the most technical of these three apps. It is definitely the highest learning curve of the three. So it's not a tool that you're just going to pick up overnight and be able to have a fully functioning app, I wouldn't say. Is it as big of a learning curve, I think, as like a bubble, if you're used to bubble or at least play with it? No, but it definitely has a learning curve to it. Now, if you have maybe a more technical background, maybe you have like you can code just a little bit, or even you, maybe you are a full stack developer. And this can be a faster way to get things going because you, you have all the design elements, you're not recreating the wheel. That can be really, really nice. So, but again, it, it's not, this isn't the easiest app to pick up. So if you're not a designer, if you're not especially technical, I wouldn't pick up Flutterflow right away. This could be like 
maybe version two, three down the line, if you're, especially if you're building your first app. Rant over, let's jump into some of these toggles here in Flutterflow. So as I mentioned, right, there's all the different elements or components as some of the app builders have talked about and mentioned, named them. But this has a little bit of like, they, they're kind of a combo, right, of a Dalo and Glide. So you can see there's elements and you can drag and drop things in here. But this is where, like, I think if you're used to Webflow, actually Flutterflow has a lot of the same components, right? So like, there's like the padding and alignment. So like this, like this right side of the screen has a lot of the like Webflow type of vibes in terms of like logic and the, how you build things. So if you like Webflow, I think you'll like Flutterflow um, maybe even better than like Glide or Adalo. The other thing, right, too, and similar to Webflow, right, is that it can be a little more technical that than more than most people want to actually handle. So, in what I think the biggest feature, right, that I think that Flutter Flow can, especially if you're more technical, is this custom functions tab. Now, you can actually add your own custom code right into Flutter Flow, which is really cool. So maybe there's like a widget or a part that you want to just custom code that maybe isn't in the some of the elements that you can include in Flutter Flow. Well, you can just custom code them right here. Um, which is really cool. The other thing about Flutterflow, which I think is really, really awesome, is that let's say like maybe Flutterflow goes out of business for some reason. You can actually export all of that code that you've built out your app with, and it's real code. It's like built out, and then you can start building it in, in real coding. So you can actually, you can leave Flutterflow if you want to, which is really cool, right? All that code is there. Um, so maybe like you're scaling, and maybe this, you just scale to a point where like Flutterflow can't support it for some reason. You, it, you can actually get away from that and still continue and building what you're actually working on. So that's really, really cool. The other thing similar to Adalo is you actually can publish to the App Store in Flutterflow, which is really awesome as well. Now, this is where I think Flutterflow can get really overwhelming, I think, is right if you go to settings, right? Here's all of these different things. You can have a light mode theme, a dark mode theme, which for some people it's great. Um, typography, this, I really like how they've actually standardized this. The apps, a lot of these no code apps haven't actually done this, but this has a lot of like Canva vibes, which I like. Um, there's all these different things you can just kind of standardize, which is really cool. Um, but as you can see, right, there's a lot of different integrations just built into Flutter Flow. So like there's Stripe, there's GitHub, um, there's all, Google Analytics. So if you want to track analytics through, through your Flutter Flow app, you can do that. So. Again, if you like, to, if you want to be a little more technical and be able to maybe not code the whole thing, but have code available to you, Flutterflow is really great at being able to do that. And if you have maybe like a design background and can code just a little bit, Flutterflow might be the best example for you. The last thing I want to mention here in Flutterflow is actually one of these cool features that especially is important if you have a team working on building this app. So let's say you're building all these different features and you want to get feedback on it. One of the cool things I think that the other tools don't have, at least yet, is that you can add comments. And actually, kind of like a Google Doc and, or Notion Doc, you can add, like, add a comment. So it'll be like, hey, what do you think of, of the, this part or this element, right? You can add a comment, you can tag people. So that's really, really cool that you can just like tag and have all the communication all in one place, rather than like, hey, things are in Slack or Airtable, wherever they, like, you're tracking these kind of different things. You can add comments, you can add things, resolve them just like you would in Google Docs, which these app, other app builders haven't done just yet, but I think this is a really nice piece. It makes sure communication is going really well, especially if you have a team, like maybe there's even just two of you working on building an app in Flutterflow. So those are my three favorite no-code app builders for mobile apps. I would love to learn what your experiences have been with any of these three. If you have any feedback, leave a comment down below. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you can give it a like. And if you're looking for more content like this, you can check out other videos on this channel, like this one here.